Griffin with Trade and Perform Coaching. Uh, wanted to uh, review uh, for today. I guess it's uh, let's see, it's a Wednesday, November twentieth, twenty thirteen, and um, kind of go over what went right, what went wrong, and uh, at least how I could have improved my performance and uh, what to do when there's not a trade. Actually, it'd probably be a good uh, a good basis for this uh, conversation. So. Coming in this morning, right? Let's take a look at a fresh chart. I'm going to pause this. So this is what we had coming in this morning, right? This is obviously just basic trend lines. And again, I'll, I'll restate my my uh, position on trend lines. Trend lines are simply a point on a chart and nothing more. They're like lines on a highway, right? Everyone's supposed to stay in their lane, but if you've driven for more than a day, you know. Uh, no one does and uh, oftentimes they don't even see that they're there right you just get straight up straight up run over so um, That's what we were looking at this morning coming in on ES from the uh, perspective of the of the daytime perspective, right? And this is what we had on ES um, using a thousand tick chart was um, We saw that there's a down channel here and the down channel was uh, pretty much intact, right? but I also noticed that um, as of yesterday afternoon we started making um lower highs and um, higher lows right just barely in the overnight session but it, it was there and um, we had held we had held the low from yesterday on the overnight which just put us at the at yesterday's low and the globex low were pretty much identical at 1782 so 1782 became a key area right and uh, it looked like my reason for cautioning uh, this morning when I was going over the trades was what I was seeing in NQ and I thought that because this had been such a gentle downtrend right and we really haven't done any significant damage as I pointed out that um, I thought we actually could have a chance to run up back up to 1798 and I wasn't far off we got back up to 1794 there was two things by the way that made this morning very difficult we had two news bombs that had come out um, and so my cue for this morning was that I was hesitant on the short side um, and that I would be looking to the long side and I also wanted to get the majority of my work done prior to 11 a.m. that's always my goal is to get the majority of my risk off by 11 a.m. so um, let's go and look at um, NQ here real quick so when we're looking at NQ this is NQ on the day time frame and I had pointed out early this morning that we had formed a wedge that we were gapping above this downtrend line and that I expected that as long as we held above this downtrend line that we could push higher right and this really set up some really nice trades um, that I had actually called out on my uh, uh, the Twitter feed I used to send info directly to my clients um, and just the, the point is that I'm not trying to get people over to trade the NQ versus the ES uh, you know sometimes you have two sisters and you always want to date the better looking sister don't you so uh, um, at any rate NQ is the better looking sister this morning so I spent more time trading it and the reason it was a better looking sister was because um, the backside test of this downtrend line gave some really nice entries and I tagged this three times one two three to the upside right and you'll notice that um, my position uh, right or wrong was that I was neutral uh, on the short side that I would rather be long and my main reasoning for that was that NQ had held up this entire time and we've held up above this um, uptrend line that we had started late yesterday afternoon okay and you'll notice that that did not get broken until right when we released the uh, fed minutes and, and even then it was kind of a quick whoosh down into the low of the day and we hit the it was really just a backside test of this downtrend line right which could have easily resulted in just a nice pop back up so um, I think the risk reward was still there to the upside um, that same at the same time when we look at the ES and I'm going to pop this pause this again and the reason why I'm doing this is so I can see if I can consume less time and get more information in so the interesting thing about this setup was that this is NQ at 1 o'clock and this is ES at uh, 1 o'clock and we actually already broken underneath this uptrend line the same one, same one that was holding on NQ and so the question became at that point was um, who's going to win right the Nasdaq Bulls or the ES Bears and obviously 
at the end of the day, you can say the Bears, uh, you know, won this wrestling match, although I wouldn't call it a significant win. So the other thing that I want to look at is um, I held an impromptu conference call today, webinar, and what I had mentioned, okay, so the first thing, when we're trading, we're looking for good rotations into zones, okay? So there's two types of trade locations on my charts, okay? There's single point trade locations, okay? They are lower odd trade locations and you need to be a more aggressive trader and realize that the odds of those trades working out successfully for you are lower at those points. One of the things we use to um, gauge whether the trade was effective or uh, whether the trade is good or not not good or whether we should take it at that zone or not at that zone is one of the qualities that we look for is the rotation size and today the rotation size that we were looking for was a minimum of six ticks and so excuse me six points and so the first thing is that this is 85 right here up into um, 90 but not quite 91 right so we didn't quite have a six point stretch up into here and this was the first time in and it got rejected so I wasn't looking to take the short side of ES today for the very blunt and simple reason that um, NQ has been leading rallies up. Okay, and I always come in with the concept of um, yes, we should pull back, but we haven't. And ES has been leading the market up the entire. Excuse me, NQ has been leading up the market the entire way, and. So far to this point, if you shorted every time NQ was strong in the morning, okay, out of 10 times, you lost nine, okay? So I don't want to be on the losing side of that formula, and I was all right, and I said this morning, I will probably miss the first down leg in a move, and I'm cool with that. Why? Because I don't want to have my butt handed to me. I'm all about keep making my money and keeping my money, consistently making my money and keeping my money. So if you look at this, there was not a large enough rotation in here for me to want to take the trade. Maybe the back of the zone would have been good, but this this was not where I wanted to take my trade location. I wanted uh, I wanted a little bit more rotation higher. I simply didn't get it. Uh, needed to be uh, up, up by 91 and it didn't happen. So that was the first rejection down, right? My focus on my trades are usually the first time into the zone. Why the first time into the zone? Because that's where I have the highest odds of getting paid, right? My primary objective is two points, right? I'm usually taking either all my risk or part of my risk off at two points. So here's the first move in. That certainly gave you two points. Even the second move gave you two points in. I pointed out and I put this out on stock twits. This is the third move up into the white zone and I would not be looking to fade it. Um, let me see if I can find that here real quick. And that tweet came right here. I put it on the public. I put in right here at 9:11 a.m. This is the third test of the white zone. It can still reject, but the more tests, the less likely that that is to happen. And we had a news bomb, and that ran us up. Now that gave us a beautiful rotation, um, actually from our intraday lows of 1786 uh, right to 1794. Right, so it was a beautiful intraday eight-point rotation from yesterday's close. Uh, it was uh, almost a nine-point rotation up from the close really nice area to consider taking a trade from um, again you had to be pretty aggressive and I still would have preferred to have my trade location uh, right up in here okay so but you have to realize at this point I don't have an objective of, of trying to capture every single move and I'm going to show you in a minute that uh, NQ actually was providing quite a number of nice trades um, even though I don't talk about my NQ trades that much uh, there are other markets sometimes, and sometimes the, I consider the NQ and the ES are not the same. They're sisters. Uh, sometimes one looks better than the other, and uh, you know I'll choose the uh, better-looking sister usually. Uh, sometimes I take both of them at the same time because uh, it's fun, and uh, you can make money doing both of them at the same time sometimes. But uh, today, NQ in the morning definitely offered the better opportunity. Again. The other point about this that's very important, talking about rotation size. So the move from 1794, right, back down into 1789, this is only a five point move here, right? And it was rather abrupt, okay? So what would it take, what would it take to take a trade up in, in, in this zone? What I would have preferred to see is a stretch up in 1796 and then a move down, right? 
And then the other thing that I pointed out was, right, this is a clean break right here. This is a break above, and we should have held above. And then I started pointing out, you know, this closed below here, we really need to get above 1791, or we could very easily um, have a uh, trap trade. And it was about that time where I put out on the blog, I put, um, the key will be to see if NQ can maintain upside momentum. Small range in the meantime, do less, make more. I said, if we can get above the wide zone, we have room to 1795. That was at nine. Uh, that was at 9:15 a.m. Right, and we almost got there. We were here below. We got to 17.94. Okay, and then um, again, I reminded again. This is why I keep my primary focus on the first touch. Right, and then here was the most important thing I think I said all morning. Right, uh, at 9:58, the white zone has been tested from both sides this a.m. Going forward, I will not initiate trades at this level. Why did I say that? Okay, so look. We are just trading through this thing. This is chop city. Why would you ever want to get involved in this? This is where losses, chop, just gets racked up, chews you up, and spits you out. Hands down, why would you ever want to get involved in that? No one would want to get involved with that. I can tell you that right now. No one would want to get involved with that. So um, I would encourage you uh, not to let yourself uh, get involved in that situation either. Uh, this is just asking for trouble. You have no idea which way this is going to break. I understand that people call it to the short side, and I'm glad that it, it worked out. But for most smaller traders, less experienced traders, guys that are trading size, okay? If I'm trading one contract, sure, I can afford to make that call. It goes 10 points against me. Who cares? It's 500 bucks. I'm trading 50 contracts, 30 contracts, even 20 or 10 contracts. Hell no. Why are you going to sit there and let that trade go against you with 10 contracts for 10 points? That's 5,000 bucks. And that's what's going to cost to find out if you're right or wrong. And then the other thing that I put that was very, very, very important. Okay. And this was the key for the day. Instead, I'll look at to levels above or below with good rotation to open a position. Easy money's been made. Okay. So then we had the uh, uh, another clue, right? One of the Fed officials used the word taper. We could not get to new lows. So again, that kind of left me thinking, unless something comes out that pushes us down, that, you know, that we can't even get it down when the Fed uses the word, a Fed uh, chair uses the word taper. Okay. So, um, and then I concluded with the market doesn't know what it wants to do. And so we get chop. And we got chop until the Fed minutes were released. Now, remember, I said I want to take trades from levels below. Well, look at this rotation. This is 1790, right? 1790 takes you all the way down to uh, where it's 1790 here. This takes you all the way down to 1783 and uh, 1783.50. This is um, almost a uh, this is a six to seven point rotation here, right? Exactly what we've been talking about. And look at the response from that, right? And I did this live with a couple of my clients. Uh, by the way, the t the recording's just too long to get uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to see if I can edit it. And uh, put it out there. I'm not sure that I can. Um, look at the long here. This is this is a five point trade right here. First touch, right? Continue going. Here's your swing high. Was into the gap fill, right? We're finally holding below gap fill. What's well, necessary to get bears involved? 1765. Excuse me, 1785 and a quarter. I'm going blind, right? From 1785 and a quarter. What's 1785 and a quarter? You take out six points. Where does that put you? Right in the middle of this zone right? 1779. Look at that. From 1779, rotation for three points up to 1782. What's my primary target that I'm always hammering into my clients? Get your two points off the table, whether it's on the whole position or part of a position. We're not looking for a million trades. We weren't trying to trade all this crap right in here where you couldn't trade easily, right? This is what we're looking for. And then the last piece, right? We bounced up our high 1782 1782 we've already tested this zone this is second test all the way down to 1774 this is almost an eight point rotation down and it gave you a beautiful you easily got your two points right all of this with reasonable stops behind the back of the zone on the first touch right you easily got your two points and then some in this particular case if you took the, te the uh, trade right from the middle the 1775 it gave you another five points to the upside and by the way, I called this trade out in real time over stock twits. So again, this can be done. Trading can be done in a very structured way if you know what you're looking for and you know how to manage your risk 
and grow your trading account. My name is Simon. Y'all have a good night. Talk to you later.